What is up everyone? Welcome back to Great Ace TV and today I'm going to be talking about the death of a young woman named Lavena Johnson. Lavena Johnson was from Florescent, Missouri and was 19 years old at the time of her death. By all accounts, she was a happy, loving daughter who wanted to follow in her father's footsteps. And that was actually one of the main reasons why she joined the military. Her father was once in the military. And he later recalled in an interview the moment Lavena told him that she was joining the military. I think she had talked to her dad at the beginning of her senior year. And she said, do you have enough money to send both Lakeisha and I to school? And I said, yes, I do. She said, well, I want to go to school in California. Can you afford that? And I said, well, uh, that did kind of catch me off guard. I said, but if I have to work until you ladies finish school, I could do that. And she said, I was thinking about going into the Army. And I said, absolutely not. She said, Dad, I've already kind of made up my mind. And I said, so you're telling me and not asking me? And she said, right. I said, oh. I said, okay, now we got to go and talk to your mom about this because you know she's not going to be happy with this decision. And even though her parents didn't necessarily agree with her decision, they understood that it was her decision to make. And they also understood that there was nothing they could really say because once she made up her mind, there was nothing you could do to change it. So shortly after Levana joined the military and she went through basic training, she was sent to Balad, Iraq. And that was around May of 2005. But she kept in constant contact with her family to the best of her ability by writing letters and talking to them on the phone whenever she could. With the last conversation she had with her parents being on July 17th, two days before her death. And her mother said that Lavina seemed very happy on the phone, noting that she had just gotten word that her unit may be returning stateside in a few weeks and that she would potentially be home to help her family decorate for Christmas, something that she really enjoyed. Plus her birthday was about a week away on July 27th. But two days later on July 19th of 2005, Lavina Johnson was found in a contractor's tent dead. The Johnson family were informed of her death a short time later, and Mr. Johnson was told that he would be contacted by the medical examiner as soon as her autopsy was performed. Well, the autopsy report was done on July 22nd of 2005, and Mr. Johnson was notified of the autopsy report on August 3rd. He then immediately asked the medical examiner if a rape kit was performed, noting that he noticed bruises and marks on Lavena's face before her funeral, that led him to believe that she may have been attacked. But the medical examiner responded by saying that he felt there was no need for a rape kit to be performed due to the state the body was found in not showing any signs of a struggle to him. Then on September 19th of 2005, Levana's father received a copy of the full autopsy report. And the autopsy report concluded that Lavanna Johnson committed suicide. The official story the military was telling being that at 1145, Lavanna Johnson left the barracks, walked across the post, and sat down on a bench in a dark contractor's tent, then lit a small fire to burn some notes that she had printed earlier before putting her Army Issue M16 in her mouth and pulling the trigger with her right thumb. And this all happened the morning of July 19th of 2005. And the Johnson family did not believe a single word of this story. From the moment Mr. Johnson saw his daughter's body, he immediately began to suspect that there was some foul play involved in her death. Specifically because there was no suicide note found. There was also no bullet because the military reported that the bullet went through her head and out the window behind her. And there was also no significant gunshot residue found on Lavina's hand. So sometime later, after going through tons of red tape, Lavina's father received black and white Xerox copies of all the photos from the crime scene, along with some paperwork from the initial military investigation. And as he went through the pictures, he began to think to himself that the pose that her body was found in didn't seem like a pose that a body would naturally fall into after someone shot themselves in the face. The autopsy report and photographs also revealed that Lavanna Johnson had a broken nose, black eye, loose teeth, burns from a corrosive chemical on her genitals, 
and a gunshot wound that seemed inconsistent with suicide. With several reporters suspecting that the chemical burns were used to hide DNA evidence of a rape. The paperwork from the military also first told Mr. Johnson that Lavina's death was combat related, which didn't make sense to him because his daughter was working in a telecommunications room, nowhere near combat, unless the military considers the fact that because she was in Iraq and she died, that her death had to be listed as combat related. That's the only reason that would make sense to me why they would list it that way. And later in the document, it also stated that Lavena was severely depressed and deranged, stating that she hated her life and that she didn't want to be alive, which didn't make sense to the family since the last time they talked to her, she seemed very happy about potentially being home for Christmas. And after reading that in the report, it only caused the Johnson family to ask more questions. It wrote them back because I wanted a psychological profile because I wanted to see what they were going to say. So I specifically asked them, if my daughter was walking around depressed like you said, number one, then why was she carrying an M16 rifle around? Secondly, what implications do you have that she was depressed? They wrote me back and they said, she had a change in eating habits. They said she started eating ice cream three and four times a day. Here she is in Iraq, and the temperature is 120 plus degrees, and she's eating ice cream. But I guess if she had been drinking beer like the good old boys, that would have been okay. But she's eating ice cream. If you go and you check your statistics on ice cream consumption, that's one of the most consumable products in the world. So we got a whole lot of potential people walking around there that's suicidal. There's no logic to this. There's no reasoning to this. There's no evidence to this. And every piece of evidence points to foul play. Yeah, it sounds crazy that that was their reasoning behind her being so depressed. But they also stated that fellow soldiers also came forward and told them that she had expressed feelings of depression to them. And as more documents started to come out, the Johnson family actually learned that Lavena was raped at one point while she was in the military, before her death. And at the time of her death, she was actively receiving medical treatment for an STD that she had gotten due to her rape. Something that she had never told her family. And this is actually something that happens far too often in the military. Um, it happens so much that there's actually a name for it. It's called command rape. And command rape is when a man or a woman of a higher status or a higher ranking basically uses that status and ranking to take advantage of the younger men and women who join the military. And they do these things to these young recruits knowing that if they even have the courage to tell someone, no one will believe them. Which is just, it's extremely sad that something like this goes on in the military, but it definitely does go on and it happens far more often than it's reported. But after finding this out, the Johnson family, with the help of a few other people, began to look into other cases that were similar to that of their daughters. And that is when they discovered the Tina Priest case. Tina had been raped previously while she was in the military. And at the time of her death, she was receiving counseling and treatment because of her rape. She also, like Lavina, kept in constant contact with her mother and never expressed any feelings of depression or anything like that. But sometime later, she was found dead in her barracks of apparent suicide. And she actually committed suicide the same way Lavina did by putting a M16 in her mouth and pulling the trigger. But her mother, Joy Priest, didn't believe the official military story. So she had her own autopsy done. And the ballistics findings of that autopsy stated that Tina at 5'2 wouldn't have been able to kill herself with an M16 because her arms were too short. She wouldn't have been able to reach the trigger. And the Army's rebuttal to these findings was that she must have just pulled the trigger with her toe. And what made this case and this information so pivotal to the Johnsons was the fact that Tina was actually taller than Lavina. Tina was 5'2", and Lavina was only 5'1". So if Tina's arms were too short to kill herself with an M16 rifle, Lavina's arms must have been too short as well. But the military basically brushed this information off, and they doubled down on their initial findings that Lavina Johnson committed suicide. 
So after looking through more documents, Mr. Johnson became aware of a CD that contained all photographic images and the originals of Lavena's crime scene. So they wrote the military and asked for a copy. The military unsurprisingly denied the request, stating that there was some information like names on that CD that they didn't want to get out for privacy reasons. So Levena's father decided to go to Congressman Lacey Clay's office and asked him if he could retrieve that CD for him. And after a congressional hearing, he was actually able to get a copy of that CD. So for the first time, Levena's father was able to see the crime scene photos in their original form, not in just black and white Xerox copies. And he also got to meet with the Army's investigation team in Congressman Clay's office a meeting that Mr. Johnson secretly recorded. And after looking at the original photos and after the meeting, the Johnson family believed more than ever that Lavina Johnson was murdered. So they went to the media to spread as much awareness as possible. And that's basically where the case is now. The Johnsons are still fighting the military, not only for their daughter, but for the sons and daughters of every family who has dealt with a similar situation. Christmas for the Johnson family sadly hasn't been the same since Lavena's death, mostly because that was her favorite holiday and they can't help but remember her on that day. But since her death, the family has become a lot closer. So I think that this case highlights the biggest problem with the military. They aren't transparent enough. This family is obviously grieving. Their daughter is dead. Why can't you give them the information they want? All they ever asked for was complete transparency with the investigation. They wanted the information, what the military was finding, and everything like that. And the military wouldn't give up any information without making it difficult for the family. And I want to start off this statement by saying that I, I appreciate the military. My father, both my grandfathers, and a couple of my uncles were in the military. And I appreciate the fact that they go over wherever they are and fight for my freedom. I very much appreciate that because I would never do it. But with that being said, for every good person that's in the military, there's also bad people. Like every job that's in the society, there are good people working those jobs and there are bad people working those jobs. And the military makes it too easy for the bad people that are mixed in with the good people in the military to get away with these things. If they have a high enough ranking, if they have a high enough status, they can get away with anything because who's going to believe this 18 year old kid saying that a sergeant, a higher up who's been in the military for 10, 12, 20 years did something bad to them? Who's going to believe that? Especially when they're overseas in another country. And even though they do investigate crimes and things of that nature on their own, they should allow outside parties to also investigate those crimes. Be because then you won't have a situation like this where the family isn't going to believe anything you say because you're not being forthcoming with your information. Let an outside company come in and do the investigations and have like a middleman who will actually talk to the families. Uh, I do want to note that there was a separate investigation done on Levena's death by a, by a separate group, not in the military, but the only information they had was the information that the military gave them. And they came to the conclusion that there was no way to dispute what the military decided happened to Lavena, which was that she committed suicide. But they also said that there was no way that they could say it wasn't murder. So it was like this in-between area. But again, I think that just comes down to the fact that they were only able to get the evidence that the military would give them. So it's not like they would find anything new with that information. But be sure to let me know what you guys think about this. Do you think that it was suicide? Do you think that she was murdered? Leave comments down below. Let me know what you guys think about this. Let me know if you've heard about this before. But that's all I have to say about this. Thank you guys for watching. I know it's been like a, a week or so since I did my last video. I had a sinus infection and it was it was crazy. It, it lasted for about 10, 10 or 12 days. Still kind of got the after effects of it, but I feel a lot better. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Like always, hope you guys continue to have a great day, great week, great month, great year. And I will catch you next video.